You have night number one that says we're a work in progress. And then you have night number two that says we, we, we can absolutely win because we've got a superstar. I mean, a big giant superstar, but is she going to have to score 45 a night to win? If she is, this isn't going to work. So because this team didn't have a lot of time in preseason to play together, because John Cole Jones spent a significant amount of time dealing with injury coming into the season, not really playing, getting her conditioning in, because it's going to take a while for this team chemistry to come together, because Courtney Vandersloot spent the whole preseason in concussion protocol, for all those reasons, New York fans, relax. Is it going to work? Yes. Is it going to work today? No. But... A lot of people were disappointed in opening weekend. A lot of irrational people were disappointed in opening weekend for Liberty. <laughs> that was LaChina Robinson, one half of the Around the Rim podcast with our good friend, uh, Tarika Foster Brasby, here to uh, drop knowledge to get buckets on uh, the WNBA, uh, the beginning of the season, and who knows, maybe we'll sneak some Colts talk in there as well. Uh, but I want to stay with that theme, though, Tarika, like, so far, like, what's real? What's an illusion? Like, some of your early impressions from the first, you know, not even handful, first few games of the WNBA season. I, I got, a, I got a, an idea that you may start with your Connecticut son. Oh, you're so smart. I am <laughs> absolutely going to start with my Connecticut son. Um, they are quite certainly a surprise. I don't think anyone expected them to go 0 and 3, but I also don't think anyone expected them to go 3 and 0. They're leading the WNBA right now in the standings with three wins against two of which against a really good Washington Mystics team. So it wasn't like the wins came easy. They definitely um, show that they are a team that is still rooted in defense. They show that they are a team open and welcoming to embracing the style of play from new head coach Stephanie White. And so we are definitely excited about them. On the other end of that, um, as the clip that you played, still trying to figure out what's going on with the New York Liberty. Now, while my co-host is very adamant that there is still time and people need to have patience, I am on the opposite end of that spectrum. Y'all ain't got no time because y'all play in New York. And New York fans do not <laughs> know what rationality means. They don't know what it means to be a rational fan. They want you to win and they want you to win today. So y'all ain't got no time to figure it out. You better figure it out now. <laughs> you know what I, I, I really enjoyed? And I, I want you to uh, to drill down on this even more. I enjoyed uh, enjoyed a Twitter thread that you had when you said, "Look, okay, thank you all for paying attention to Brittany Griner's return. Uh, thank you for your opinions on Becky Hammond and uh, the scandal that's going on with the Las Vegas Aces." But hey, let's you know have us on, do your research, don't keep up the same energy in the middle of the WNBA season not just when mm -hmm. things are happening. Go ahead and, and preach the gospel. I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna sit here with my fan from either an insurance home or MLK uh, 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 on the front of it. They are, that's go on ahead. both sides, yeah. It's insurance on the yeah, back. That's right, that's right. Mortuary on the back, MLK on the front, yeah. MLK on the front, there it is. Gotta be the MLK with the praying yeah. hands, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. The, the whole point of that is just simply we see a lot of people in mainstream media following the WNBA when it's time for free agency, when it's time for the big names to drop and who's going to go where and who's going to stay where. We see a lot of people following the WNBA around this big story around Brittany Griner and around the, the controversy and the allegations around Becky Hammond. But the way that we grow this league is that we continue to have that same energy and that same want to cover this league accurately and fairly when it's not the biggest stories. When there is nothing going on in the NBA, somehow mainstream media finds a way to manufacture a story to make sure that there's an NBA headline every single day. Nobody is unhappy right now in the NFL, and yet the NFL is still dominating the headlines. Aaron Rodgers got his money. Nobody's mad there. Lamar Jackson is there. I haven't heard a single player saying they're holding out for OTAs, and yet still we find a way to keep the NFL atop 
of the headlines. And so all I was simply asking is, let's keep that same energy for the WNBA. We recently had a star player make a remark about how she's being officiated like a rookie. That would be Elena Deladon. That's something mainstream media should pick up. If any other NF NBA player would make that kind of comment about how they're officiated, we'd be all over it. So all I'm saying is take the extra step to give these women the coverage they deserve. Tell their stories. Make sure you're pronouncing their name correctly by all means. It is Brianna Stewart, not Brianna Stewart. And just continue to get to know these teams so that we can continue to provide the adequate and fair, equitable coverage that they deserve. Well, I want to provide you the opportunity to both uh, further comment on Elena Deladon's um, uh, comments on, on the officiating, but also too want to sneak in. So this is a, two different questions in one, um, just in the sake of efficiency. Um, we all celebrated Brittany Griner's return, but mm -hmm. the Mercury are going to again early, but I would just love to know about on the court Phoenix as well. So yeah. you can tackle both of those subjects real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Elena Deladon had a had a point. I was actually covering the game that she played against Connecticut when she made those comments. And the officiating not only has it not been was it not extremely good in that particular game, but there was also an official missing in that game. So apparently somewhere between halftime and the third quarter, the official one of the officials limped off the court, went to the back. We had no idea what was going on. Midway through the third quarter, we found out that the official had some type of ankle injury and would not be returning to the game. The WNBA does not have a rule that they have to have backup officials on site. Hmm. So the game continued with only two officials versus three. Now, if you are already complaining about, you know, not being able to get the calls that you desire, well, now you are down an official so you can imagine what type of calls yeah. were missed or not missed and things. So now we're opening a new conversation with, do we need to have backup officials in the WNBA for instances like this? But when you add that to a player like Elena Deladon, who has literally been under injury protocol for the last two years, hasn't played a full season since 2019, only 29 games over the last two years, had tons of back surgeries, also was dealing with Lyme disease at one point. Like, this is a player who has worked her butt off to get back in this league. The last thing she needs is to feel like I am a champion and a superstar, and I'm not even getting the kind of cause that I deserve. So definitely something that the league needs to look into. In terms of Brittany Griner, Brittany Griner had an amazing start this weekend. 18 points in her return, 27-10 and 10 on Sunday. I mean, I was crying. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. I was crying because mm. the, the, right. I'm coming home. Then she screamed at the crowd. I'm back. I was, I was like, wow, this is the energy that we need. But let's be honest, this is practically a new team under a new coach that Brittany has not played with before. Vanessa Nygaard is only in her second year as head coach, and she's never coached with Brittany. This is also a team without their star point guard, Skylar Diggins-Smith, who is out for maternity leave. So there are some pieces that they're trying to figure out where to go, how to yeah. go, where do we where do we place them? Um, so it's gonna take some time. And I think that again, you know, as we kind of talked about a little bit before the show, that it's a very small sample size. So yeah. there can absolutely be adjustments that will be made. But I think the point is this is a BG who has not truly touched the basketball court in this way since 2021. And if that was 70%, of BG? Yeah. I'm scared for a hundred. Yeah. Um, hey, before we let you go, I saw A Rich splitting first team reps. <laughs> Listen. Listen. Hey, that's my, my bless my dude to be out right there. there. Light them up. He about to light them up. Y'all heard y'all hear it here first. Y'all, you wait till football season starts and I come back on here talking. Cash major junk. You know, you know it. How many wins? <laughs> How many wins? Put it out there now. How many wins? 11. Oh, 11. 11. Yeah, okay. 11. All right. Damn, All right. 11. Okay. <laughs> All right. 11. I respect it. <laughs> All right. We appreciate you, Tarika. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you for watching Brother from Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.